In this fast-paced life, everybody is getting stressed out and that stress is leading even to depression and many other issues. In this particular segment, Vaidya Manjiri Nadkarni will talk to us about how Ayurveda can help. Let's learn a little bit more from her as to what all needs to be done and what can be done so that we can remain healthy. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So, a lot of people are stressed out today. Life is becoming fast, yeah. you know, and uh, there's a race even amongst youngsters also. Yeah. Even children also say we are stressed out. Yeah. What to talk of the elders. Yeah. So, this is a part of our life. We yeah. cannot, uh, you know, run away from this. Yeah. But what can be done from your perspective, from Ayurveda's perspective, as to we can, uh, you know, continuing with our daily life, but also we are not, uh, you know, bogged down by all this. Yeah, so the first thing that Ayurveda teaches you is to appreciate your individuality mm -hmm. and also see where you are in life, right? right? Everyone's journey is different. Everyone's paths are different. But yet we go on to social media like Facebook and we see our friends, you know, clicking smiling pictures and they're doing wonderfully and sometimes people start feeling sad about themselves right? right so we start comparing ourselves with somebody else maybe we are not of the same age we're not of the same position and that creates a lot of conflict anxiety and depression happen when you're not happy with yourself hmm. so something needs to be changed but you don't need to push so hard for the change so really taking the time seeing where you are appreciating yourself mm -hmm. is the first step to you know understand your journey and get rid of anxiety and depression but there is competition all over you know yeah. there's peer pressure everybody wants to excel in whatever they are doing yeah but again as you said of course we should not compare ourselves yeah. with others yeah. but most of the times we generally compare ourselves yeah. so how to bring in that mentality yes we are unique and yeah. we have our own journey to cover not we have to follow yeah. the race which everybody is in yeah but there's a cost to everything right so if you take a car and you drive it at the speed of 100 kilometers an hour it's only going to drive so much and run out of fuel right but if you take your time and drive it it will cover the same destination it might take a little bit more time so that's how you can understand where you are and ayurveda teaches you about your own unique body type mm -hmm. we have what we call prakriti or constitution so some people have you know vata body type who have like a lot of they like traveling, they are very creative and artistic. Some people are Pitta dominant, they make really good leaders. And mm -hmm. some people are Kapha dominant, they make really good nurturers, right? right? So once you understand your body type, once you nourish yourself in the right way, you can appreciate yourself and you can also do the work that's perfect for you. Mm -hmm. So if someone's a leader and he's in a position where he cannot use his leadership skills, he's going to be frustrated. Right. Right. If there's an artist and he's studying engineering, for an example, which is a hard math subject, mm -hmm. he's not going to be happy as well. Right. And mm -hmm. because we don't know our paths, that leads to a lot of conflict and, you know, confrontations. Sometimes we follow the patterns others choose for us. So right. really, if you understand yourself, that's the key to a happy life. So, whether Manjiri, how can you determine what uh, category you fall in? Uh, okay. Is there any uh, formula by which we can, you know, determine I am a Peta yeah. or a Vata or whatever? Yeah, so it, when you go on online, you know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of websites. If you go on my website, manjirinadkarni.com, you can also find what we call a dosha quiz, mm -hmm. right? So, there are several questions we will ask you and will help you determine whether you're a Vata, Peta or Kapha. Okay. The other thing about anxiety, depression is, you know, the fast foods we talk about, right? right. Or the fast life we talk about. It, uh, instant is not always good you know instant gratification is what we look for right, right now but instant is not always good in the long term because you're paying the price mm -hmm. so if you don't nourish your body in a good way you're going to be depleted of all the vitamins minerals all the nutrition and right. you are going to be more anxious mm -hmm. right if you don't go out in the world if you don't take time to exercise if you're not walking outside if you're not exposed to sunlight even modern research has shown that lack of vitamin D can create depression and especially in um, a country like Canada where we are in cold and there's not sunlight for three to six months mm -hmm. that can create a host of issues as well. So the first thing is, as you said, you know, understand yourself, understand be yourself. Uh, close as much as you can to yourself and yeah. then comes your lifestyle. Yeah. And in lifestyle over here, no comparison with others, live your own life, spend more time outside with yeah. nature. Yeah. Uh, then comes the diet. Diet yeah. must also be playing an important role in anxiety, leading to anxiety, depression. Yeah. So as far as foods are concerned, tell us what should be taken. So diet plays a huge part because diet not only feeds your body, it also feeds your mind. Right. So if you're eating processed food, if you're eating a lot of chemicals, it mm -hmm. can create a host of issues in you. I see a lot of kids, you know, who are on sometimes who, who display behavioral issues and mm -hmm. really young kids, but they're drinking pop all the time. 
they're drinking you know different color drinks they're eating you know m&ms they have like lots of color in them mm -hmm. so the color can irritate you as well okay so chemicals play a really important role you know in changing your you know physiology so you mm -hmm. should avoid all the chemicals and eat as close to nature as possible right um Again, omega threes, which we talk about all the time, you know, they really help with your stress levels. Even something like ghee, mm -hmm. a lot of root vegetables. When you talk about vata aggravation, anxiety is a result of vata aggravation, right? right. If you're exercising too much, if you're really working hard, if you don't give any time to yourself, if you're not sleeping well, mm -hmm. it causes vata aggravation, which can lead to anxiety. It can lead to insomnia. Right. So when you really nourish yourself. You take the time to eat whole foods. You take the time to make sure you know you're eating according to your digestion. Mm -hmm. um, you can help. It can help you get rid of anxiety. Um, with depression, you know, if you don't feel like getting in touch with others, if you're trying to you know exclude yourself from the community, if you're just trying to be all by yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, if you see any signs of depression, always ask for help. And there are wonderful Ayurvedic body therapies as well. You know, you can do something like Shirodhara, where you lie down on the table, and you know, there's a nice stream of um, oil, oil or water the... falling mm -hmm. on your forehead. So that right. really has shown amazing results in depression. Okay. There are beautiful herbs like Brahmi, which can help you with anxiety or depression. There's holy basil that really works well with anxiety. Mm -hmm. So Ayurveda has lots of solutions for everything. Great. So, uh, you know, you have talked a lot about prevention. You've also touched a few aspects as to what can be done. Yeah. But people who are passing through this phase, you know, yeah. uh, apart from the herbs, apart from the Ayurvedic treatment and the foods and the lifestyle, what they have, yeah. uh, what about music? How can music also help them? Music supports you because it's also a part of Ayurveda. If right. you look at music, right, because we talk about five elements in Ayurveda and music or Akash is about creating the space. Okay. Right. So music really soothes and heals you mm -hmm. and it also helps cre uh, create like space in you or, you know, support right. you in that way. So listening to different ragas and not, um, you know, loud rock music, mm -hmm. something really soothing, soothing right. even chanting Om, mm -hmm. right, which we do a lot in, you know, for prayers and stuff or any chants that you prefer that really, you know, resonate with you mm -hmm. can help heal you from within. Now, there are many medicines also which people uh, take because if mm -hmm. they are passing through this phase. Yeah. But in Ayurveda, apart from the herbs, what you mentioned, yeah. are there anything specific uh, related to which people can take, which they can help? Yeah, we have specific formulas as well mm -hmm. um, made with the herbs too, like Brahmi, Ganvati and other ones. Mm -hmm. If you're already taking any, any modern medicines, you have to consult an Ayurvedic doctor okay. or a practitioner to make sure, you know, because modern medicines are potent and you don't want anything interacting with them, mm -hmm. right? So you can consult a doctor or a physician and make sure that, you know, any of the Ayurvedic formulas you're taking don't interact with you. Loneliness is a major issue that also leads to yeah. further, you know, depression or even uh, yeah. bipolar disorders and other things. Yeah. So what should the family do at that time when someone in the family is passing through this phase? What kind of support can they provide? So there has to be support. Like the first thing is to understand, right, that right. any kind of mental illness is also a form of illness. You know, when you have fever or when you have diabetes, everybody talks about it and tries to support the right. person with the best resources right but when you talk about mental illness there's still a lot of taboo mm -hmm. so people need to understand that mental illness is also a form of illness where people are trying to do their best right, right? so instead of being hard on them because they're anxious or they're depressed or um, you know you just need to understand and support them unconditionally you mm -hmm. also need to give them the time and the space right you know it's not that a person behaves anxious purposely mm -hmm. or they're not trying to delay the work right. they just need the time and space to heal so you should support them talking to them taking them out in the nature doing small things to them mm -hmm. boosting their um, right. self-esteem yeah. as well right mm -hmm. so because a lot of teenagers also deal with self-esteem issues nowadays right. if you look at seniors you know they're really lonely so we have a lot of senior population here and if they're lonely so even talking to your neighbors or making sure you know they are doing well whether you talk for five minutes just mm -hmm. asking the, them how they are right. would really these things matter these things do matter small things really matter wonderful when uh, when they manjiri it was a pleasure talking to you thank, thank you for you. your perspective thank you